for the truth session. Yeah. Come on here. We're going to alleviate some of this trauma we got going on. Right? Yes. I am your host with the most. I am the one, the apostle, the prophet. That's right. Getting ready to come into your eye gates and into your eardrums with 2,400 watts of power in this hour. Listen, we're going to get it on. Real strong. Oh, yeah. Let's populate, y'all. Y'all know how we do this. Go ahead and share it. Come on. Hit that little share button. other than our very own master teacher, Apostle T, to the E, hey Portis, what's going on, oh yeah, we gonna light it up, come on y'all, come on, let's share this energy, come on, Woo! no more trauma, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, What's going on? 
Greetings, greetings, greetings. Enotep, a baragani, a mani kaka, a mani dada. Hola, bonjour. Assalamu alaikum, ashalom alaikum. Konnichiwa. Ni hao ma. Greetings family, come on in. This, it's another truth session. And you all know that this is the place where you come and your thoughts really matter. This is a place that you come and they're protected and you will not be derided. You will not be ostracized. You will not, will not be dehumanized, demonized, cast aside, any of those things. This is the place where we want to hear what you have to say. We want to know what your feelings are, what your thoughts are. We want that. We're going to be dealing again. We're going to deal with the second part of um, um, black sheep trauma. We're going to deal with the second part of black sheep trauma. And remember, I showed you all the picture in last session. I'm going to show this picture again because it's very important. I think we really need to kind of get a grasp. I think um, I believe it was. Uh, Dr. William Cross, I think it was. Not Dr. William Cross, but uh, I can't recall his uh, doctor's name right now. But at any rate, what he says that we have been lied to repetitively. So he said that we must tell the, our story, tell the truth repetitive, repetitively to continue to tell it over and over and over again so that it begins to resonate that it an imprint and impress upon your thought processes, right? Okay. Uh, was it Dr. Henry Clark? Um, I see you, Pastor Brown. Um, okay. All right, fam, let's do this. Let's take a minute and share. And I'm going to introduce you all to another instrument that I have. I'm going to get um, the master teacher to assist me. I need my antelope shofar. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to create us a frequency that we can all get on. How about that? Uh, was it Dr. Henry Clark? Okay. How y'all doing, fam? I know. Gratitude. Um, you know, have you all ever seen one of these? Remember I showed you all, let me, show, let me get that smaller version, which is the ram, ram's horn, right there to your left, apostle, right there, there you go. Mm -hmm. Now, remember I sounded this one for you all already, which is the ram's horn. This is a shofar, and this is a shofar. However, this is an antelope. This is the long horn shofar, and this is the short horn shofar. So I'm gonna sound this, but I'm, I'm trying to give us a little time to populate because see something is going on with Facebook because my people aren't in here. So here's what I want you all to do. I want you all to just take a moment, fam, and everybody share, okay? The, just as a reminder, let me, I'll, I'll sound the ram horn first for you, okay? Can you go a little deeper for me? That is the shofar.
Let's create a frequency. Let's call everybody in. Let's make an all call for everyone. Creating us a frequency. I see you, Bell. What's going on, man? Uh, possible with your system, please. Gratitude. Okay. All right, fam. What are we doing here today? Right. Okay. There's so much energy already in here, family. Um. Okay, we're going to deal with the second part of uh, black sheep trauma. And we were kind of speaking from it um, in terms of, you know, how the black sheep of the family, you know who you are. You know who I'm talking to right now. You know if you're a black sheep because you, you're the one that always got in trouble. You're the one that was always blamed for everything. But you was always the one that was so intuitive and, and precipient and persificacious. You were the sharpest tool in the shed, <laughs> which got you in trouble, right? It, it got that, that phrase. I remember the phrase, you think you know everything, right? <laughs> you got, and then you got that other phrase. Remember, I, I would share with y'all, uh, sit your little smart ass down. Yes, sir. <laughs> you little smart ass, <laughs> right? Yes, sir. But the, the, okay, but the ironic thing about it is that the, the black sheep is always the one that tends to be the problem solver. You, you can go to them and they can kind of like solve the problem for you. Not only that, but they have a, a certain way of speaking to you that can bring calm to you when you are in certain kinds of uh, fixes or situations or in tight places. They know how to navigate you through the, those, those tight places, right? Yes, sir. So... Excuse me. So, but they also are the most traumatized. They're also the most traumatized. So, but we're gonna we're gonna talk. I, I really want to um, just talk, fam, fam. And I want you all to talk back. I see you more, uh, Cedric. Um, but I really want us to talk back, family, because this is very important. This is some very powerful information. I'm going to introduce. I'm going to introduce a term to you all today that I. I developed, I coined uh, through, through over 30 years of study, right? Over 30, 30 years of study. And I want to take my time. I, 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 I just kind of feel like just kind of I'm in slow motion today. I was telling my staff today, I said, listen, I'm I'm operating in the signs of slow motion. <laughs> so, but what, here's the thing that I really, I, I really want to emphasize this to you all. That when we talk about sheep, S-H-E-E-P, when we talk about sheep, there is automatically an image that is formed in our minds, right? Yes. We're going to see this kind of beige type of or white type of sheep <coughs> right isn't that mostly what 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 we see except you really know the difference that that is a a mutation of the real sheep it is a degenerate sheep it is not the actual sheep the actual sheep is a black sheep yes. right you all remember the nursery rhyme bye bye black sheep sheep have you in the wool 
remember uh, KP, she was humming a little bit of it. Um, uh, KD, excuse me, uh, was humming a little bit of it. She's supposed to be on cue, but she's doing something else. She, she, did, she missed the cue. Bob, Bob, black sheep. Have you in the wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. The, but is it the, the, the point that I'm, I'm trying to stress to you all is that they know that the sheep is black. And also, not only do they know that the sheep is black, but they also know that that sheep is dominant. That it is not docile. It's not a docile sheep. They know that. That's why they mutated it to do, do what? To control it. They did what? They dumbed it down. Yeah. To control it. See, you can't control that black sheep. See, yeah, 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 yeah. That black sheep in the family, listen, that, that sheep, come on here, it's the most powerful one in the family. It makes the most noise. See, when you, when you begin to make noise, what happens? You get attention. Yeah. Notice all the rest of the kids, they just, just as normal, sort of for speaking. They're just normal. They, they really don't get into anything. They're just quiet and just continue on into what it, whatever it is that they're doing. But what happens with that black sheep is that that black sheep has wandered out of the pasture. Well, what are you saying? The black sheep wanders out of the pasture. And when I, when I say pasture, I'm not talking about leaving out of a gated area and going out and, and eating green grass. No, I'm saying that that black sheep is precipient. That black sheep has the ability to come out of the theta ram and come up into the beta, to that alpha ram to get into that gamma ram, to get into that delta ram, and, and begin to roam around and begin to develop. <laughs> yeah, they begin to develop because hence you get the phrase that, that child done been here before. Yes, sir. Hello, somebody. Are we going to talk today? We're going to talk today. That child done been here before, Right? Y'all know we, 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 we have people in our family like that. They'll tell you, man, that child, that child hasn't been here before. If you meet any of my children, you'll know that, wait a minute, that's an old soul. We, we, what well, we coin the phrase, old soul? What is an old soul? An old soul is what referring to the fact that they what? Have journeyed before. Yes. Yes. Right? Okay. Now, again, let me put this in your eye gates. Can y'all see that? Those, see, see what color those sheep are? Black. Those are black. Yes, sir. They never let you see them. What do they always keep in your eye gates? The white, the white sheep. Yeah, Mary had a little lamb. Yes, fleece was white as what? Snow. Everywhere Mary went. You understand? Meaning that it was what? Dorsal. Meaning that it was dumbed down. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. But, but it, meaning that it, it was dumbed down. And see, you, you have to understand this. That's the process that they used when they integrated the schools. Mary, the white female, come on here. And then the docile lamb. Uh, y'all ain't going to say that. Okay, I'm going to talk anyway. I'm going to talk anyway. All right. I'm going to talk anyway. But, so then hence you get, what, what, when, they, when they integrated the schools, what you had was Mary... Come up here. Dumbing down the black sheep to become little white. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. It is a process that has really worked well because it's it's through trauma that they were able to really get a good stronghold 
on on our black communities. Why? Because they through studies, it has been found out that trauma affects the brain in a way that it will not develop correctly. Not only that, that the, through studies that that has been found out, but also through studies, it has been found out that trauma also can rewrite your DNA. So, wow, isn't that, isn't that interesting? There's a number of dynamics that are going on. Uh, in the in the theater out here, and they're not being properly articulated. You you really can't deal with it until there is an articulation that it is brought into your line of sight or into your line of hearing. It is then and only then can you recognize that and and then begin to um, develop thought for it. Okay. So this is one of the things that we do here in the truth session. We develop thought for certain levels and realms of trauma. And I'm going to get to this term that I was telling you all about just a little, uh, a little earlier. But, but I, I want to, and, I, and I'm going to get to this because this is very important to understand why Gail and Oprah are acting out. OK, I'm going to get to that because this is very important. And I want to I want to come from a unique perspective with it. I, and I know that 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 it has been well exposed. People have been talking about Gail and Oprah. And uh, there are some great dynamics out there uh, in terms of them talking about uh, Gail and Oprah. And um, and they're not distasteful either. They're not not this colorful or anything that they, they, they're primarily uh, an attempt to reveal the hurt that is within them. See, Oprah and, and Gail, they have a platform from which to speak from or uh, behave. And it can go unchecked by us because we don't have the, 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 the finances, the backing to be able to do it. But what we can do is look at them and see that they are hurting because they're hurting other people. Yes. Other people are saying, Gail, stop, you're hurting me. Oprah, stop, you're hurting me. You're hurting us. You're, you're hurting your own people. You're hurting the black community. And I'm telling you, for the first time, we can see what trauma looks like, how it dresses up. It can be the finest, the richest person that has hurt within them. That hurt is at some point going to surface and project itself. Our, our own very dear sister that, that they blackballed and ostracized and put out of Hollywood. Monique. She was a very charismatic uh, comedian and actress. Because she wouldn't obey, they hurt her. And you can see the trauma. You can see it. You can see it all. You can see it all on Monique. You can see it. You can see how it has weighed on her. And her powerful figure. And I'm just saying this because they are an example to, of hurt and trauma. Um, sister, uh, what's her name? Leandra, Leandra, Leandra uh, Johnson. I don't know if you all know her, man. She is a very powerful, charismatic, prolific singer. The girl is bad, but they hurt her. And she went on, she went, she went live. She went on the, on the internet and she start talking about it. Dude, that's trauma. And this is what I'm saying. We're so traumatized as a people. We're hurt as a people. And I'm, I'm going to relate this also to the church because I come out of the church. I went in and came out. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go in and come out. You're not supposed to stay in the church. You're not supposed to join 
the church. Uh oh. See, see, he was doing good. Now there you go. He, he, yeah, yeah. We finna give you the right hand of fellowship. Isn't that something? That ain't what you're supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be proselytized. That's not what's supposed to happen with the church. Again, the church is supposed to be a triage or an emergency unit where you go and get healed. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Now, triages or emergency rooms, you all know how they were developed? They were developed in Viet, uh, 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 because of the Vietnam War. That's how, that, that's how we came about with the emergency rooms and all of that because of the Vietnam War. They had to set up, be able to, to operate quickly, move quickly, identify things quickly, and then work on it. The, hence, you get the, what, the emergency room. You get the triages. You get uh, places where you can go and get fixed quickly. Well, that's what the church is supposed to be. The church is not a holding place. And I, I, I'll get to that at some point. I'll get an opportunity to do a whole session on that at some point. But here's, 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 what, I, here's what I want to say. Most of the ills that we're dealing with and confronting in terms of tr trauma is a result of what the church is doing. Okay, okay, okay. Please, I'm not messing with you all's faith because I got all kind of pastors on here. Uh, I deal with pastors. Uh, I mentor them. I counsel them. I. So I'm in no way trying to do that. Hey, cuz, what's going on? Hey, 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 Don. Hey, 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 chocolate chow. The queen is in the house. Queen Brenda Brown. Listen, y'all got to give my girl some space and time, y'all. Hashtags daddies matter too. She's up in the house. And those of you, listen, if you got businesses, we, we have our, our, our very own master teacher here that, uh, of course, teaches and have uh, tutoring uh, classes. Um, and I'm pretty sure he'll put it out there in LaVale. And, and um, all of you guys that do things, please make sure you put them out there, please. Okay. Hey, M&M, &M, what's going on? Hey, Amos, Keisha, what's going on? Okay, so now. Let me get back to this because it's very important and it's a lot of us that are wounded. And I'm telling you, I am still healing uh, from the church. Let me. This is a term. I, um, uh, um, T. TCS. Okay. TCS. I need y'all to understand why I'm saying this because it's a whole bunch of us suffering from that. We've really been devastated. And I'm going to get to something that's very important that the church is doing that keeps us in a place of hurt. Okay. When you, when you, when you look at this, it's, it's what? It's what? What is that? Traumatic. True what? Traumatic. Traumatic. What? Church. Um. What? Syndrome. Syndrome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Traumatic church church syndrome, and what that is is. I get a definition. A working definition for you. Hold on. Here. And master teacher, I'll put this out here in just a second. I got it somewhere. I, I keep notes everywhere, you all. <laughs> My staff be laughing at me, man. They be this guy here, man. It's something else. Um, uh, traumatic church syndrome. Traumatic church, church syndrome is when a person or a group of people has experienced a traumatic encounter with someone that's in authority or decision-making position within the church structure. Okay? Now, what that means is that whoever inflicted the trauma upon you, they were in a decision-making position. 
In other words, they could have an effect upon you. Okay? And, and this is why I'm saying this. When you look at, again, when we talk about Gail, Oprah, and then we talk about Sister um, Leandra uh, Johnson, th that older sister is so devastated. And I could feel it. I could feel her hurt. I could feel, I could feel her pain. I could feel Gail's hurt. I could feel uh, Oprah's hurt. They, they, they are hurting. And hurting people do what? Hurt other people. So you have two, you, you, you have two persons, Gail and Oprah, that have a gateway to in, in an inroad into so many people simultaneously that they're, they're hurting scores and scores and scores of people and they're hitting triggers. You look at, look at, look at the situation with Snoop. If you look at the situation with Snoop, when you look, if you look at the video, Snoop was calm. He was, he was really calm. He was really trying to handle it. He was trying to be cool. As my nephew said, <clears throat> my nephew said, everybody be cool. He was trying to be cool. And then he asked the question, can I, can I say it? Can I say it? But if you, if you look at, after he said, can I say it? It was a switch. He went, <laughs> it was just, it was just like that. The energy took over him. And let me tell you, when the universe chooses you, there is nothing you can do about it. He had to say it. He could not not say it. He had to say it. And as a result of him saying it, it generated a conversation. What are we having? A conversation now. It, and it is a spirited conversation. It is a spirited debate on some ends. It is a spirit, spirited conversation. It is, it is a spirited conversation. A, a projection, you name it, it's happening and it is going on. Why? Because for the first time, we get to see what trauma looks like, how it is dressed up, and the need for us to attack it and let us get healed for real. See, let me, let me tell you something about healing people. Healing people have a healing language. They have a language that is so developed that it envelops. The language is so developed, it envelops. It envelops you. It, it, it draws you nigh. It brings you in. It, it, it causes a gravitational pull. Because you know within what is being projected is what you need to get you to where you need to be. Isn't that something? It happens like that. So, now, it, now, now, um, Check this out. Okay. So Dr. Dyson, Dr. Eric Dyson, he goes out and he, he put forth his um, commentary. Uh, he, he put forth his whatever he wanted to say. And you all know I don't berate. But I, 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 I need to say this. There's no justification for Gail and Oprah's behavior. Given, I don't care if she was in a room full of people and took pictures with people all night long. That does not justify the right for her to hurt the community. Given whatever Gail has done, the body of work that she does, she's done doesn't justify her being able to hurt people. Okay, why am I saying this? Because this is very important because we want them to stop. We're saying stop, Gail. We're saying stop, Oprah. We're saying stop to all of you all that are traumatizing our people. Stop. You can't, you're not going to justify it. Steve Harvey, you can't justify it. We already know. You, we already know, man, that there are certain things that you've already done and said, man, that, 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 that has hurt. You've done some trauma. You traumatized our sister when you brought on a program telling her it's about the money. In other words, you was telling her to prostitute herself. Now, I, I'm, I'm not gossiping. This is it's, it's in a the public theater. You traumatized that sister. 
that was trauma. Somebody need to tell you, you can't talk over that. That's why I told you when people are really healed, they have a language. They have a developed language that envelops. But not just, okay, okay. We know, we know, right? We know that Oprah has star glory. Okay. We know that Steve Harvey has star glory. We know that Gail has star glory. We know that. We know that, that, that they are premier. That's not the point that we're arguing. We're saying that because you are premier, that means that you should have developed a language that is inclusive of us, that heals us. You understand what our plight is because you, you obviously you're in it. You've just been given a, a level of liberation. Okay. Right. A level of liberation. Now, when, when people tell you we're free, we're not free. Stop it. Somebody lied to you. We're not free. We, we are, at best, we've been liberated. Haven't you ever just known it? just a liberation movement? We've never been free. Because why? Because really freedom hasn't ever been the goal. It, freedom hasn't really ever been articulated. You know why it's not being articulated? Because it takes a revolution. To be free takes a revolution. To be liberated simply means to be in a position where we can all get along. Why am I saying liberation? Because, see, in liberation... It gives you the appearance that you are making choices and decisions apart from the dominant society when you aren't. Because if you check it out, every decision and choice that is made have to be determined by the dominant society. That's what liberation is. Liberation means that you don't get an opportunity to make a choice free from dominant society. Now try to make one free from dominant society and see what happens. We're talking about freedom. Freedom takes a revolution. Freedom takes that. You have to be in a resistance. You have to resist to get freedom. We're so traumatized, we don't even know the difference. And see, that's what Gail and Oprah doesn't understand, that you are just a couple of liberated black women. That's all. You're not free. So you, you work for the, the corporation, which means that they own you. They own your whole life. You can't even say certain things. You can't even behave a certain way. You can't even go to certain places or they will, they will dishire you or fire you. Right? This is very important because, see, we really never talk about these things. That at best, again, all we've had was liberation movements. Liberation movement, again, just simply means that, okay, let us just make our choice and then we'll let you decide if you want to agree with it or not. And then we'll do it, we will or we won't, whichever, whichever way you want to do it, however you want to say it. Okay? Yeah, that's right, Oz. The corporation called America, that's right. Yes. Let me look on the timeline just for a second. I'm, um... <laughs> it's just around to say, yeah, Coon Harvey. <laughs> I didn't say that, y'all. Since around to say it, so y'all won't say, okay, uh, 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 Apostle. I thought you didn't. I love when y'all put it out there. I can say it. <laughs> okay, um, the red octagon, uh, Apostle. Yeah, the stop sign, baby. Stop when you when you when you see Oprah and Gail. Stop it. Hey, Range. Okay, who am I missing? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah I am so disappointed in Dr. Uh, Dyson, too. Here's the thing. See, <laughs> um, my administrator corrected me on it. I said, if you hit a dog with a brick, it'll, 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 it'll holler. Or something. I said, anyway. But she corrected me and told me, she said, uh-uh. It said, a hit dog will holler. Right? And somebody else told me that, too. Hey, Miss Nelly. Somebody else told me that. Hey, what's up, Benson? Um, yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah, uh, brother, uh, yeah, uh, uh, intuitive one, brother uh, Craig Leverett said it as well. 
a hit dog will holler, right? So when Snoop said what he said, come on, it hit every dog out there. And let me, let me show you. you have to see, see, he called Gail a dog. But you got to see the symbolism. It was an allegory. You got to see the symbolism because when, when, when he hit her, every other dog hollered too. That, look at Steve Harvey. He started hollering. Look at him. Dr. Dyson started hollering. Uh, Oprah started hollering. And, and it's, it's a whole bunch of them out there hollering. We just, listen, they just ain't. Put it, they just put it out there and we see it, right? Okay, so now you have to see. See, now you start seeing the boule, the bourgeoisie, you know, those that want to, they're aspiring to some higher level of humanity where they'll be accepted by the dominant society, which would never happen. Which would never happen, right? Okay, we're talking, right? Okay. Everybody all right? Okay. Let me look at some of these. Hey, mate. I didn't see you in the room. I didn't know you was in there. I'm sorry. Um, hey, what's up? What's up, Jerome? All right, they're my homeboys. That's 217, baby. 217. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody good? Okay. I'm trying to get to listen. I need. Yeah. Oh, who was it? Come on, speak it out, cause I can't see it. Roland Martin. Oh yeah, he hollered like a dog too, huh? Boy, I'm telling you, boy, he hit him. Family, listen to me, please, please. I'm not making light of it, but you know what? We have to laugh to take the sting out of it. Because we can see them, they can't see us. We're looking at them like, man, really? See, they've been so out of touch with the community that they don't even know we're looking at them and watching them. They think that what they're doing is so subliminal that no one sees it. I don't know how many of you all have ever seen that, uh, <laughs> that progressive uh, insurance commercial with, uh, what's the name, Lowe? What's the name? Flo. <laughs> Flo, the guy was looking at Flo. The guy, hey, yo, I'm so full. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I am so full. But, um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the spirit <laughs> oh man y'all better get some of this energy man I, oh my god Woo. <sighs> I'm trying to get to some of these comments <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right, Jason. How you doing, bro? Okay. I was trying to... See. Mabel put something out there. Do y'all see that? What, what did she say? She just commented, laughter is great food for the soul. Yes, laughter is great food for the soul. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there it is. I was trying to get to it. She said, um... Steve Harvey and Oprah Winfrey are puppets on a string. As soon as they stop dancing on their stage, they will be messed up by their owners. That, this is correct. Fake people don't like to hear the truth. This is so, so sobering. This is so true. This is so true. Okay. Now, let me, get, let me, let me go ahead on and get to this because I know y'all waiting. Let me go ahead on and get to this. I want to get to um, the traumatic church syndrome and, and why it's happening and why it's working so good. How many of you know that the church is comprised of at least 70% females? About 70 to 75% uh, makes up the, the church, quote unquote, the church world. I don't know how many of you all know that. But yes, not only that, but guess what? The church has the largest, 
divorce rate. The church does. Now, you can start putting things into place because you have to understand something. Now, we dealt with this, and we're going to put it back out there. I'm not trying to proselytize anyone. I'm not trying to preach to you. But I want to, I want to draw your attention to, of course, uh, a great piece of literature called the Holy Bible. It's literature. It's letters, notes, uh, epistles, prophetic words, um, plagiarism. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we know, right? Okay, I told you I'm full, man. I am full. Um, okay, so we're going to go to Mathethia, which would actually be the name, but they call him Matthew. So that, that's confusion right there. That's why people confuse now in the church. You, your, your thoughts are ambivalent, but you don't know it. You don't understand that anytime confusion comes around, it, it gives to hypnosis. Okay? It gives to hypnosis. Let me, let me just show y'all something just real simple. <clears throat> Excuse me. Show y'all something just real, real, real simple. Mm. You know what I'm saying? God. Okay. Elohim. God, Elohim. Means to be superhuman. Okay, yeah. Let's do what I'm saying because I'm, I'm I'm getting ready to go somewhere with this. But when you when you look at the word Elo, Elohim, now we, we're talking about the church. Okay. This word comes out of the Hebrew word Elohim, right? Not only does it mean superhuman, but it also means Mighty one. Okay. Okay. Spell gospel. Yeah, put it on. Yeah, spell it and then put it on the timeline. Spell it. G O what? G O S P E what? L. Gospel, right? Now, this is the church. This is what I'm trying to tell you all why we are in certain binds and can't get out of them. But if you look at the word gospel, it's a compound word. That's what it means. Good spell. Now, they hurt that sister, Sister Leandra Johnson, right? One of the things that she said was the church is in a what? Is is a occult. She's right. It is. You know why? Because the church conjures. But they're not gonna let you know that. They conjure. That good spell, if, you, if, you, if you're using a good spell, that means that you're hypnotizing someone with the cadence that you're using. Right? That's right. Okay, listen, this spell is so good when you put it on people, they'll give, they'll give their rent money. No, they're going to get evicted. They'll give you their car payment knowing that they're going to get evicted. Why? Can you do that? Because you know what? You got them stuck in a childlike state of mind. Ah, uh, okay. Some, somebody gonna talk to me in a minute, right? I, I know we don't, we don't, we don't want to hear these things, do we? 
Hmm. Okay. So now we got we got that good spell thing working there. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna work this spell on you, but we got some we got something that can work them spells now. Yeah. Boy, they'll get the hum. <laughs> You mm. Y'all know when you get we get that get that deep groan down there. Mm. <laughs> and they start moving yours. It getting your spirit and start moving your spirit. And you in a minute you be telling, mm, yeah, go ahead on, Pastor. <laughs> we with your pastor, go ahead. <laughs> Y'all know how we start hitting that cadence? Yeah. And you get right on up in there. Next thing you know, you be walking down there getting all your money. No, you ain't got no business doing it. Right? Let me, t let me show you something else. What's that? What they tell you in the church? Do what? Yeah, don't they tell you bleed the blood? What they tell? What they? Uh, we got pastors over here. I know we got some of them. Uh, in the church, don't they tell you what they say? Plead the blood. Please, plead the blood of who? Plead the blood of Jesus. What, what are you talking about? What does blood do with? Yes. Hold on. Watch this. Don't you got? All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Blood is an occultic. Yes, yes, yes. There's certain rituals that is done with what? Blood. With blood. Yes. Because as the administrator said, what's in the blood? Life. What? Life. Okay, okay. Say, say it again. I said life. Right, man. Also in the blood, right? That's in the blood, right? Right? Life is in the blood? Life is in the blood. What, what, what else is in the blood? White? Blood too. What? Say it again. Blood too. Okay. Now, how do you think white folk got here? <laughs> <laughs> and, and what else is in there? Red. Oh. Red, right? Actually, how many of you know that blood actually isn't really red? Right. Yeah. No. Yeah, it is a blue, black, purple. Yes, yes. Like the Nile. Yes. Like the Nile. Yes. Like the Niger. Yes. Like the yes. Niger. Yes. Like the Nagrito. Yes. Like the Nigger. Yes. Like the Negro. Yes. Come on. Look. Yes. Right? That's right. And then, of course, of course we know that what? Uh, uh, plasma is there, too. Yeah. Now, we know plasma is separated with the what? The subdiffuser, right? Yeah. You can get plasma mm -hmm. to separate from the white blood cells, from the red blood cells, and you get plasma. Well, where does, what, what else has plasma in it? So within you is the sun. The son of is in you. Oh, no, no, uh uh, no. That ain't in you. That ain't in you. This is in you. Right here. That's why you heat up. That's why your body can heat up. You can meditate and heat your body up and lay hands and transfer energy. Yes. That's what we do. 
I know how to do that. I teach others to do that. Um, we were having a conference <laughs> one time in uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi. And, <laughs> and a master teacher, he had a battery in his pocket. The, um, the C, what is it? The, um, it was a C battery. C battery. Yeah. He had the C battery in his pocket, y'all. And we were moving and the spirit was high. The energy entered into the room. And the, he had to take the battery out of his pocket because the battery was on. It was so hot, it was burning his leg. And he brought it over to me and put it in my hand. I said, man, what happened? He said, I just had it in my pocket. Why am I saying this? What I'm, what I'm doing is bringing this into your ear gates and putting it in your eye gates so that you can see it and you can hear it and bring it into your line of sight. And then you can begin to utilize it. OK, so now, but I'm still I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back to Gail in, 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 in the Oprah name in just a minute. Give me just a second. Give me just a second. But the reason why I'm trying to get you to understand is that you don't go into church to stay in the church because the church is not the temple. You are the temple. And if anybody is a student of those the, of the text and those epistles and those letters, then you understand that when the master teacher taught, he says, go ye into all the world. Meaning the cosmos, meaning the universe. He didn't say go ye all into the church. You got people that keep going around church on, on, the, on the circuit, from church to church to church to church. And nothing ever changed, man. Same people, same people, same people, same people. So the, the, the whole thing was that it would be a triage, that it, it would be where a person can go and be healed. A person can go and their needs be met. This was the purpose of it. But what has happened is that, again, they are. You look at old, old, old. Joy Osteen, I just want to tell you that Jesus loves you and I love you and Jesus will do anything that you ask him to do. See, that's he's dropped down into that low frequency. That's the that's the theta. Oh my I'm going to talk to you. Just give me a minute. I know I, I that's the, that's the theta realm. Yeah, okay. Y'all going to talk to me? Yeah. See, the theta realm is where you, you, you open up the. The vision. The vision realm. Where, where you get a person to start visualizing. Y'all feel me? Yes. But see, it's the, it's the lowest vibration because it's only to about seven to eight hertz. Which means that you slowed everything down in slow motion. So you slow your cadence down. Yes, Jesus really loves you. Right? That's right? But if you come into the, into the black church, what do you end up getting? You, you get fire because why? They speed the cadence up. Yeah. Right? That's right? So you got this dichotomy. You got it going on. So it's, it's, it's reflective because why? It is in the church realm. Because they're going from what? Church to church, right? You bring the fire in. Then you bring, you bring the low vibration in. And then you keep people what? In a childlike what? State. Okay, now let's look at Okay, let me go and take you to Matitha real quick. And, 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 and uh, nah, but here, here, okay, here's one thing I, I got to, we got to, okay, here's what we got to find out. Where is this place located? Where? On the inside. Huh? Where? Where? Okay, heaven is on the inside, right? Okay, how, how do we know that? From documentation, right? 
from the master teacher, Yahushua, some calling uh, Jesus Christos or Jesus Christ, uh, Yahushua. Right? Okay, so he said heaven was where? where? Well, it's what he was asked a question, right? So what did he tell him? Put, put that out there, master teacher, in that, in that eye gate so they could see that. I need you to understand where heaven is so you can understand what's happening to us. The heaven is not out there beyond the sky. We, I, I, I wasn't born by the river. Huh? I, I, I wasn't in a, in a little tent or whatever. Um, what did it say? I was born by the river in, in a little tent. Yeah, yeah, and I, uh, yeah, I've been running ever since. And that ain't, it, yeah, I, 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 I'm not afraid uh, of living, and I'm not afraid of dying, right? I'm not afraid of living. I'm not afraid of dying, and I'm not looking for something beyond the sky. See, we, we, we messed ourselves up with stuff. You're afraid to transition. Let me tell you something. To get up out of here is the greatest high ever. That's the highest you can. Oh, my God. It's a high. Not a fear. It is the highest high you can get. Listen, the master teacher says something very important. I think it's very, it's, it's noteworthy. He used a parable. He said, except the wheat of corn fall into the ground and die first. He said, then it abideth alone. He said, but if it falls in the ground and die, then it brings forth what? Much fruit. Look at Kobe. Kobe was a larger than life figure. The boy was a god. Look what happened when he transitioned. Look, look, look how many lives he touched. Look at what happened to his energy. His energy went into all of those people. They can feel it. That's why when Gail said what she said, it triggered Snoop. Because why? He's on the inside of Snoop. Oh, come on here. It is. Right. Where's heaven at? On the inside. Heaven is on the inside. So if Kobe was going to heaven, where was he going? On the, on the inside. They can actually measure. They can actually measure energy in the room. And what our, the dominant society has found out is that when our loved ones transition, their energy comes into us. Look how many lives that boy touched. He spoke about three different languages or two, two that I know of. Yes, sir. Those, are, those are other people that he touched. Those Italians, he touched them. Don't you know that boy lived forever? Forever. Why am I saying this? Because you have to understand the God particle. There is a such thing as a God particle. And I think they refer to it as the, the Higgins uh, a particle, but it is the God particle. Listen, you can't see it. The only thing that you can know about it is that it was once right there, but it ain't there no more. <laughs> That's how God is. Always what? Evolving. We're always what? Evolving. Right? Do something for me, family, real quick. Let me, let me take a, a station break here. Let me Grab something to drink real quick. Real quickly, I, I need you all to share. Okay? And then we're going to finish this up. KD, boy, she be laying it out. Look at that. Yes. Everybody all right? Y'all good? Hey, Al, what's up? That's my main man, Al. Al B. Fuller. Check him out at Coffee Times. Okay. Okay, do I have any? What's on the timeline? Is there any questions or comments? Yes, yeah, Sister Moore says the character Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is within. That's correct. Yes. Because we need to talk about that. We're going to talk about that real quick. 
Joe, Joe talks to those who are down in that ram with him. He is the same one that would not open the door to the church for the flood victims. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going to talk to you, Al. I'm going to talk to you, baby. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Some say drink the blood of Christ. Yes, they, that's right, Al. Yes, yes. Yep. The blood of the character. That's correct. Uh, questions like, uh, will a man rob God make the weak <laughs> guilty? <laughs> okay. Good spell. Yeah. Al said, yeah, good spell. He said, Al said, I be thinking it my whole life. You saying it, JL. <laughs> okay, Al. Uh, uh, Amos, she said, oh, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, I love it when y'all do this, man. I love it when y'all talk back. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, please, too, fam. Please. YouTube page. Go to my YouTube page, please. Like, click, subscribe. Okay? You can find me under the, the one, T-H-E-E, -E, separate word one, O-N-E, exclamation point. Okay? The one. Okay? Please, please, fam. All right. Now. Here we go. Let me go ahead and let's go ahead and do this. Now, look at um, uh, Matthew or Matthew 18 and 3. And, uh, and we, we've already, we, did, he put out here, right, where heaven is, right? What did, what did the master teacher say? Um, okay. 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 Okay, you put the uh, God particle. You in North Carolina right now? Where you at in North Carolina, Al? Let me know. Let me know where you at because you may be close to me. I'm in Columbia, South Carolina. Yes, and Al says it never dies. Okay. The, oh, let me, remember we were talking about the wheat of corn falling to the ground and die? The, uh, the thing about corn is, yeah, and you're right, uh, corn never dies. But the thing about corn is one single kernel of corn will produce about 15 others, 1,500 other kernels of corn. Because that single corn, single seed will produce about 1,500 other ones. Okay? Now, that's, that's, that's bad. Yes, indeed. Okay. Okay, did you put that out there? Okay. No, 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 no. Not Mithiti. I want um, the kingdom of heaven. I want to put that. I want to put that. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. Observation through observation. Oh, yes, definitely. I'll repost it. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right, I don't see it. I'm trying to get to it. Let me, let me see. There we go. Y'all see that? And it says in the, uh, the King James verse, listen, we're, I'm not trying to proselytize you. Please, please, please. All right. And then I'm not knocking anybody's faith either. So King James version, um, it says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, those that were fair, you see, and when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with what? Observation. The kingdom of God does what? It does not what? The, the kingdom of God comes not with what? Observations. Observations. Neither shall they say lo here or what? Lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. What is within you? The kingdom, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is where? Within you. Within you, right? We know what the kingdom of God denotes, right? Yes. What, what, what does it denotes? Heaven. What? Heaven. It denotes what? Heaven. heaven. And who dwells in heaven? God dwells in heaven, right? Or 
Elohim. Now, okay, since then heaven is on the inside, God dwells, or Elohim dwells on the inside, then who is Elohim? You are God in heaven. You are God in heaven. Not only that, but look, what's on the side of your head? Um, what are these? Temples. They're what? Temple. Where does God dwell? In the, in the where? In the, in the temple, not in the church. Right. Church is a made up word. Yeah. The Catholic church made that word up. It does not exist. Research the word. The actual rendering of it would be ecclesia. Ecclesia meaning to be called out to a locality to assemble, but however, not all in the same place. Right? So it means, it, it means to work in assembly line, to be in, in an assembly, which means that each and every person has a gift that does something to, 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 to build, to heal the cosmos or the universe. We all have different workings of gifts. Where are they? In the temple. Yeah. Right? We know through research. We know through research. And you can go and look this up, the, the Vietnam War. When, 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 when they was having the Vietnam War, what they were doing was they were doing autopsies on the brain. And when they was doing those autopsies, what they found out was that the dominant society's pineal gland or pineal gland was vestigial, calcified, yes. dried up. But when they, when they did autopsy on our brains, not only were our pineal glands intact, but they were swollen. They were large. In other words, they were being utilized. Yes. So what am I saying? Some of you may not understand what I'm saying when I'm talking about being vestigial. I'll give you an example. You, 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 have you ever seen a chicken fly? A chicken can fly. But, but they've forgotten that they can fly. They don't use their wings. They, they do what? They walk through the yard. They walk around the yard. Now. But if you threaten them, what will happen? They'll, they'll fly. Well, they, well they, no longer, they no longer uses their wings, so it, it would be said that they are vestigial. Okay? They don't use them anymore. So what am I saying to you? Uh, the dominant society or our counterparts, their, their God mind is dried up. They can't get in tune with the universe. That's why they're destroying it. Okay, let me, let me come back out of that. I don't, I don't, that ain't where I'm trying to go. But anyway... Now, let me, okay, now we found, okay, we, we found out what heaven is, right? Heaven is on the inside. The kingdom of God is on the inside. So that means that you are the kingdom. You are heaven. So wherever you go, you are God and you are letting heaven out. That's why we have the ability to make things work, make them do what they do. This is why they, whenever the, uh, uh, the dominant society want to get something done, guess who they come and get? They come get God. So who do, who do they mimic? When you go to these uh, European churches, who are they mimicking? They're mimicking us. They're mimicking who? God. Okay? Now, here, now, now I want to bring you to, um, now let's go to, to, to Methethia, and I'm going to show you where we're stuck at, and then I'll probably just put a pin here, and, and, and we'll do some more in another session. Um, uh, Methethia uh, 18 and 3. We, I, I know it's out there, but put it right back out there again. Yes, Albie says, so, so, so simple, yet so difficult to see for ourselves. Yes. Th and this is why uh, we have to uh, develop this language. This is, th this, this is why there has to be an articulation, right? Okay. Now, I'm talking from years and years and years and years and years and years and years of study, okay? Which is why I haven't completed a book yet because if I had I would have to revise it because there's so much more I know now than I did then 
And this is why I'm very careful. This is why I'm, I'm researching this for you so you can look at it and you can find it for yourself so that it's just not based upon my opinion because I have a mic and I can talk. See, some folk, they have a platform from which to speak from, but they don't know what they're talking about. Okay? Everybody all right? Y'all all right? Okay. Now, Matthew 18 and 3, the King James Verse says, And said, Truly I say unto you, except ye be converted and become a little child, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of what? Heaven. Heaven. Now, wait, whoa. What did they say? And said, Truly or verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So then heaven is an imaginary place. Yes. What? Okay. <laughs> All right. How I want to put this? Let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to put this. I want to put this where you can understand it. Okay. Now, what does a child do? They do what? They, they... Image, right? Yes. They they put what in their head? Huh? Images. Right. Which which creates what? Vision. Creates what? Vision. Visions, right? Yes. So what ram is that? Theta. What ram? Theta. It's the theta. it's the theta ram, yes. right? That is the ram where the lowest what Time. vibes are, right? Okay, it's the place of the low vibrations, yes. the low vibes. Yes. Okay, now, the, the only way to get into heaven is that you have to go low. You got to go low. <laughs> you got to go low. You got to go down. So, now the theta ram, we done talked about that. Let me, I'm a, let me, get, let me get out of here. But anyway, um, the theta ram, when we talk about the theta ram, you have to become a what? A child. Because a child dwells where? In the theta ram. Because what? That's only like about seven what? Hertz, right? right. Seven to eight. Seven to eight hertz. That's slow. That's slow. Right? That means that you can see. So children have the ability to see what you can't see, but it isn't real. Right? Remember I told you about a child plays in the theta ram. Say, for example, to take a broomstick. That child can take that broomstick and ride it and tell me this is my horse. He'll be telling me giddy up, giddy up, riding it and running through the house and everything. But you can't, you cannot, you cannot dissuade that child. You will not get them to disbelieve the fact that that is not a horse. Right? Then some children, they have what? We refer to as what? Imaginary what? Friends. friends. Imaginary friends. Oh, Katie. Hello, church. Hey, church. Woo. My friend. He don't exist. Only in your imagination. Because you're in the theta realm. You're at the lowest vibration. 
and it's not real. And when you come back up out of it, you realize that it isn't real. Yeah, what a friend we have in Jesus. All my sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. All your something. Yeah. Okay, yeah. See, right now, why am I saying this? You have to become what? A child. A child is going where? In the theta realm, and the theta realm is going to create what? Low vibrations that creates what? Images that are not what? Real. Uh oh, somebody going? I know. I, okay, all right. Okay, now, now, what am I? Why am I saying this? Because. Gail and Oprah are in the theta round. They're acting out like little kids. Yeah. Look at Oprah went on the television show and fake cried. Right. Kids do that. Yeah. Kids can drop tears at the drop of a hat. Yeah. And ain't been more crying than a man on the moon. <laughs> Hello, somebody. With the children, when they know that they've done something wrong, what do they do? Boy, they're... Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I my, I want my mind to me to do that. I want, I want to do it. Crocodile tears coming at yeah. Right? She know Gail had messed up. That's why. Why are you out here faking crying? That's a child. You're in the theta realm, and you're bringing everybody in that realm as to deceive them to get them to see something that is not even happening. But the real thing that's happening is that trauma is on trial. You've been traumatized. It comes out in your movies. It comes out in your, in your, in your, in your reporting. Come on here. It's journalism is bent over with. We're looking at nothing but sensationalism and gossip. Yeah. Real journalism was getting at the point of, come on here, what do we need to survive as humanity? Yeah. Knowing someone's personal life, come on here, isn't dealing with humanity? You're looking to destroy something. You're, li- you're looking to gossip. Real journalism, come on here, it's gone out the window. Yeah. Hurting people hurt other people. Why? Because children do children. Have you ever seen children? Children will get at each other. Man, listen to me. They'll get at each other. Yes, you need to come into the community of the adults. You need to come out of that theta ram. Everything that's been projected by, by, by these songs now, by this rap, this hip hop, you look at these, these, these are kids. These are kids and they're traumatized. It's coming out. It comes out in their rap. You know, how, how, you, how you rapping about uh, a, 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 a Percocet? Molly. How, how, how you running a credit card through your sister's Glutus Maximus? Yeah, PTSD. That's that's that post-slavery traumatic syndrome. <laughs> you you understand what I'm saying? And this is very important for us to have these conversations. It's important for us to have these conversations. And listen, I just wanted to drop this information. I want to drop this 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 last little information for you, and then we're gonna we're gonna put a pin there. All right, fam. I love you all. I thank you for your time, man. I know these sides are of utmost importance. So, and I know you make a sacrifice to be here. And so that's why I'm always sacrificing my life, my time uh, to be here and do this for you all and for me. Y'all looking at someone, man, that's, that's, that, that has had to start life all over again, reinvent himself. And it's one step at a time, one moment at a time, one day at a time. And so I've committed myself to this. I'm in the resistance and I'm resisting. I don't know how many of you all are in the resistance, but I would hope that you would get in the resistance and resist the forces that be. I'm political prisoner in 57912. I am your host with the most. 
the one, the apostle, the prophet. Let me drop this on you all. Um, uh, look down, uh, Master Teacher, and this is how brain waves contribute to the state of mind. And that, uh, what's that? One, two, three, four, the fourth. The fourth one. Will you put that out there, please? Everybody good? All right. Listen to this. I need you to. I want. I want you to catch this in your, your hemispheres. Okay. It says that. And uh, let me. See. There's. Uh, Master teacher, I think I grabbed those papers. Well, anyway, I, I just wanted to let you all know where this is coming from. It comes from uh, Mind Valley. Um, www.mindvalley.com I meant to put that on there but I, I brought a copy of it up here somewhere I, we'll, we'll get it posted out there so y'all know where it's come from but um, it says we easily forget that we are the controllers of our reality you are the controller of your reality Reality means what's real. Let me put this up here. R E A L. Real. Okay? What's real? Not make believe, not conjuring, not affirmation. Oh, he's saying not affirmation. Well, I thought we were. No, 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 no. You want a decree, you want a command. Affirmation means that you're repeating the same thing over and over and over again, expecting something to happen. That creates trauma. Not only does it create trauma, but it causes you to ruminate. And when you ruminate, that is causing problems or static in your brain or it is creating dissonance. No one is going to tell you that, though. And not only that, but when you are affirming something, uh, uh, and, and you keep affirming and affirming it, you keep counseling out and starting over, counseling out and starting over, counseling out and starting it over. Right? So when you are in control of your reality, right? When you are in control of it, it means that there is substance. There is Matter, M-A-T-T-E-R, right? Yeah. There is matter. There is substance because of energy. If you put energy and matter together, it creates mass. In other words, it manifests something. It's going to manifest something because there is something real there. In the theta realm, you only visualize, you see visions, you, you know, you can catch ideas, you fantasize there. But you want to get to the reality, you want to get to the realness so that you can manifest something, you can get some mass. But it takes these two right here to copulate. 
Because they're what? Interrelated. Okay? Now, so, so it goes on to say, we easily forget that we're the controllers of our reality. In fact, our reality is not made up of outside what? Influences. It's determined by what's on the inside. What has been given to you? What is your purpose? What have you been designed for? See, when you understand that, you get to the, the reality of it. You get to the realness of it, and you start, and you call forth those things that are in alignment and consistent with what your purpose is. If you're not the president, and you were never meant to be the president, why are you trying to be the president? That's not real. Hello? Everybody can't be the president. You shouldn't be telling your child, oh, you can be the president. It may not be for your child to be a doctor. It might not be for your child to be a lawyer. It might not be for your child to be a basketball player. Find out what their gifts are, their talents are, and develop them. Because that will be real and it'll bring the energy and the matter to bring forth a manifestation because there's going to be some sustenance, some sustenance. Right? But you know what? We can't get there. We can't get to the reality of things because we have been. Right? We have been trauma. Tized. So we're not fully developed. So we can't turn certain parts of our God mind on because of what? Trauma. Trauma. Okay, let's finish up this. Let's read it. But, but actually consistent of our thoughts, beliefs, and mindsets. See that? So, by learning about the deep, deeper states of consciousness, you can open your subconscious mind and create your reality at will. Create your reality. So, if you're creating your reality, that means that you're God. To create the reality means that you're dealing with true sustenance. You're not trying to make something through some form of alchemy appear. <laughs> Ain't no magic happening like that, baby. Y'all out there in the conscious community, y'all out there doing all what you're doing and doing this and that and, and everything and everything. Listen, stop. You're wasting your energy. You're wasting your time. Find out who you are, what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Decree it, call it forth, and make it do what it's designed to do because you are the creator of it. I love you, family. Do we have any uh, questions out there? Comments? Yes, no, maybe indifferent. Okay, what did he say? Go ahead and read it out. Say, I can't say. Good night to all the kings and queens watching here today. I'm taking this energy, this great energy. Uh, I've received you there on stage with me tonight. I appreciate all of you. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll break a leg, man. He's going, oh, he in Raleigh? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Sister Rhonda Moore says, I'm in the resistance. Glad to have you. I'm looking down the timeline now, fam, to um, y'all hit those emojis for me. Put them emojis out there. All right, Oz. All right, Bell. Okay, we have any more comments? Okay. Huh? Any more comments, Kingdom? I don't see any. Okay, great. All right. All right, fam. That looks like that. That'll, that'll wrap it up right there for us. But again, remember, let me put this in your eye gates again. 
This is the real sheep, baby, the black sheep. Those that are hard to handle. Yeah, those that are uh, persificacious, that is precipient. Yes, indeed. Black sheep, baby, I'm a black sheep. Listen, come on out to Theta Ram. I call you out of the Theta Ram. Come out here and get yourself together, get your thoughts together. Come out here so we can manifest. I love you. As always, hold what you got. Muse over it. Cogitate upon it. Ponder on it. But by all means, govern yourselves accordingly. One love. Eternal light. Peace. Power. Prosperity. And good health. Shalom alaikum. Mishmikah. You have finished up another true session, baby. Yeah, no more trauma.